Hello, my name is Glenn Hall. Uh, today is February 20th in the year 2020. This is video number 22 in my series, The Mystery of the Beast. And this video is called The Mystery of the Kodashim. I am being led to do this one today because of this news, pink news. Donald Trump just appointed his first openly gay cabinet member. Um, as I researched a little bit this morning, I found that he's already appointed two openly gay federal judges. And um, you really need to listen to my last video to understand what I think about things like this. But I want to say again that I fully support our president. I fully support Donald Trump. I believe that he has been chosen by God. I believe that he has been anointed by God to do the work that he's doing. And the great work that he's doing is to destroy the deep state. The deep state is actually Babylon the Great of the book of Revelation, Revelation chapters 17 and 18. We are living in the fulfillment of the prophecies of the book of Revelation. But I want to talk today about this. How should we who are Christians, we who know our Lord Jesus Christ and we who obey his word, how should we respond to this? How should we deal with this? There are many Christians who are what is termed a never Trumper because of things like this and because of the allegations of his um, of adulterous affairs, allegations of um, rendezvous with prostitutes, things like that. People have said, and Christians have said that they would never support such a man. And yet those same Christians voted for Barack Obama or they voted for some other candidate that did the same or similar things, but they overlook those things. I do not reject Donald Trump because he appointed this openly gay man to a very sensitive position in government. I do not reject Donald Trump because he appointed two gay men, I'm not sure they were both men, they might be women, but two homosexuals or lesbians to the federal judiciary. I think that they were um, mistaken and bad choices. And we're going to get into that now. And as we do get into it, I'm hoping that we can all come to understand who the Kodashim are, what they are, and what their role will be. Let's start with Revelation 17. This helps, what Trump has just done helps us to understand this. Verse 11 of chapter 17 of Revelation. As for the beast that was and is not, it is an eighth, but it belongs to the seven and it goes to destruction. I have shown in previous videos that Donald Trump is the eighth head of the beast. He is, as it were, a incarnation of the spirit of Persia, the spirit that came after Babylon, after Babylon the Great. He was Persia was one of the seven heads of the beast, and the eighth beast is one of the seven, clearly by the words that were above uh, verse 11, this eighth beast is not the sixth or the seventh. It was one of the beasts that came before that. Persia was the um, fourth beast. Verse 12, and the ten, ten horns that you saw are the ten kings who have not yet received royal power, but they are to receive authority as kings for one hour together with the beast. These are of one mind, and they hand over their power and authority to the beast. 
They will make war on the Lamb, and the Lamb will conquer them, or the Lamb will overcome them. For he is Lord of lords and King of kings, and those with him are called and chosen and faithful. These who are with him are the Kodeshim. The Kodeshim are the called and the chosen and the faithful. They're the ones who have been revealed as the preordained ones in Scripture, and also as the ones whom God foreknew. All of the Kodeshim, God foreknew, just as he foreknew Jeremiah. Before you were in the womb, I knew you, God says to Jeremiah. And that is true of all of the Kodeshim. The Kodeshim then, I believe, pre-existed with God. Verse 15, And the angel said to me, The waters that you saw where the prostitute is seated are peoples and multitudes and nations and languages. And the ten horns that you saw, they and the beast will hate the prostitute. They will make her desolate and naked and devour her flesh and burn her up with fire. The prostitute is Babylon the Great. For God has put it into their hearts to carry out his purpose by being of one mind and handing over their royal power to the beast until the words of God are fulfilled. And the woman that you saw is the great city that has dominion over the kings of the earth. The great city is Babylon the great. The great city is the woman. The great city is the woman who has ridden the beast for all of history. And now at this time in history, the beast has thrown off the woman and the woman is furious. And that's what we see right now. That's where we live right now. But notice this. God put it into the heart of the beast to do this. And he's giving the beast the power to fulfill his words. So we need to understand that Donald Trump is God's man. God God has ordained Donald Trump to do this work, and it is a great work. But we also need to understand that this beast, this eighth head of the beast, Donald Trump, will make war on the lamb. Well, how does he make war on the lamb? How does he make war on the lamb? When you listen to Donald Trump, you could come to believe that he is a Christian by the things that he says. He willingly accepts the prayers of Christians. He has a council of Christian pastors around him. He speaks of God often. But here's how you know that he is not a Christian. Now, how do I define a Christian. A Christian is one who has God's name on him. A Christian is one who is named after his God. But many take the name of Christ in vain, don't they? Many use the Lord's name in vain, don't they? Now we've often thought that the fourth commandment was simply cursing, cursing with the Lord's name. GD this, JC this, and so on. But just quickly in Exodus 20, you have the Ten Commandments. Begins here and goes here. Verse 7, you shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain. That's the third command, I'm sorry. You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless who takes his name in vain. How do we take the Lord's name in vain? Is Is it by cursing? Is that it? No. It's when you say you do things in the name of God or in the name of Christ, but you are really just doing your own will. You're really just walking in the flesh, doing your own thing. Countless ministries around the world do this. They're really just fulfilling their their own dreams, their own vision, 
their own ideas about what they think God would like. But when it's all said and done, their works will burn up with fire like wood and straw. And it will be seen that their works were done in vain. They used the Lord's name in vain to solicit money, to get an audience, to say that they were doing something important. But really, we're going to find that God had nothing to do with their work. We need to be very sober about this. We need to be very careful about this. I know from my own experience in in the church that back in the um, late 70s, early 80s, we did so many vain works that it wore us out, my wife and I. It was crazy. We were, we were doing the hard work. I remember lifting pianos and taking real acoustic pianos to parks to witness to the unsaved. And no one would come. You know, the only people that would be there to listen would be the people that we already knew who were already part of the church. I remember going to door to door in the ghettos of St. Louis preaching the gospel and thinking that I was doing an important work, you know, and it was really, it wasn't. It, it just wasn't. We need to learn to be led of the Holy Spirit so that the things that we do are born of the Spirit because Jesus said the flesh counts for nothing. Only what is born of the Spirit remains. And so what we see now is our president who is often using the name of God, accepting the prayers of Christians. But when you listen carefully to what he says, he is he wants and intends to give equal rights to every religion and every sexual orientation. And what does God say about that? Let's see. Let's go to Leviticus 18. Leviticus 18, verse 19. You shall not approach a woman to uncover her nakedness while she is in her menstrual uncleanness. And you shall not lie sexually with your neighbor's wife and so make yourself unclean with her. You shall not give any of your children to offer them to Moloch and so profane the name of your God. I am the Lord. Here in verse 21, he's talking about child sacrifice. Notice that that's right in the midst of these other sexual sins. Verse 22, you shall not lie with a male as with a woman. It is an abomination. Of course, he's speaking to men here. Men, you shall not lie with a man. You shall not commit homosexual acts. It is an abomination. And you shall not lie with an animal and so make yourself unclean with it. Neither shall any woman give herself to an animal to lie with it. It is perversion. So here we see that these particular acts sex with a woman during her menstrual cycle, adultery with your neighbor's wife, child sacrifice to Moloch, homosexual acts, and bestiality, sex with animals, are all linked together. They are all grievous sins in the mind of God. Did that change? Do you think that changed? Do you think... Do you believe that the new covenant changed this? If you do, you are utterly mistaken. You couldn't be more wrong. What were the penalties for these things? Let's look at Leviticus 20. Verse 10. If a man commits adultery with the wife of his neighbor, both the adulterer and the adulterer shall surely be put to death. If a man lies with his father's wife, he has uncovered his father's nakedness. Both of them shall surely be put to death. Their blood is upon them. If a man lies with his daughter-in-law, both of them shall surely be put to death. They have committed perversion. Their blood is upon them. If a man lies with a male as with a woman, both of them have committed an abomination. 
they shall surely be put to death. Their blood is upon them. So, two men commit a homosexual act. They shall both be put to death. If a man takes a woman and her mother also, it is depravity. He and they shall be burned with fire, that there may be no depravity among you. I believe that they were to be killed, stoned to death first, and then they were to be burned. And then 15, if a man lies with an animal, he shall surely be put to death, and you shall kill the animal. 16, if a woman approaches any animal and lies with it, you shall kill the woman and the animal. They shall surely be put to death. Their blood is upon them. So the penalty for homosexuality, as was the penalty for adultery, was death. They are both egregious sins. And we are not to condone those sins. Now in the last video, I spoke of taking the mark of the beast. To take the mark of the beast is to take the ways of the beast into your heart and then to act upon upon those thoughts. So what we see is the beast doing beastly things. The beast is appointing homosexuals to very important offices. And so those offices will continue to defile the land. So don't look to Donald Trump as a savior. Don't look to him as someone who is going to bring spiritual revival to this nation because he isn't going to. He is not our spiritual leader. He is our political leader and he is the one that God raised up and we are to support him. And I'm going to read you some very important scriptures in a couple of minutes that will show you how important it is to support Donald Trump and not to turn away from him because he makes these types of mistakes and these types of errors. But we need to understand this. When Donald Trump appoints a homosexual to the head of an intelligence organization in our government, he is using the Lord's name in vain because he is saying that he does the things of God and he is making war against the Lamb. He makes war against the Lamb by disobeying God's statutes. He wars against God by denying that we should live according to the word of God. In Isaiah chapter 8, God very strongly, through Isaiah, just before he reveals the government of God coming in to play and to pass upon the earth in Isaiah 9, he says, To the law and to the testimony, if they will not speak according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. Revelation 19 talks about this in terms of Christ. And so we see the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. The testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. To the law and to the testimony. When Jesus came, they accused him of putting away the law. But he said things like this. You have heard it said, do not commit adultery. And I just read you that law, do not commit adultery. But I say unto you, anyone who looks at a woman and lusts after her in his heart has already committed adultery. You have heard it said, do not commit murder. But I say to you, anyone who hates his neighbor has murder in his heart. He made the law a thousand, a million times harder. 
The Jews thought that they could get around the law by acting certain ways, by having very strict rules and regulations about what they could do and not do. And then they thought then that their loopholes allowed them to do whatever. So they figured out ways to sin without technically breaking the law. Jesus said, he called them vipers. Vipers. They misuse the law of God in order to sin. To the law and to the testimony, if they will not speak according to this word, it is because they have no light in them. Isaiah says in chapter 8, if they will not speak according to this word, who is it that is to speak according to that word? It's the Kodeshim. The Kodeshim. Deuteronomy chapter 33. This is the blessing with which Moses, the man of God, blessed the people of Israel before his death. He said, The Lord came from Sinai and dawned from Seir upon us. He shone forth from Mount Paran. He came with the ten thousands of holy ones, with flaming fire at his right hand. Yes, he loved his people. All his holy ones were in his hand. So they followed in your steps, receiving direction from you. Holy ones, that's the word kodeshim. If you were to look in this Bible, Eth Sefer, that you can purchase here at sefer.net, and I would recommend you do because it's very interesting. This, these two Hebrew letters are the Aleph and the Tav, pronounced Eth in this book. And then this Bible, it shows you all the times where the Aleph Tav occurs. Those two letters occur in Scripture. They are not translated in our normal Bibles, but they show up all over the place in the Scripture, hundreds and hundreds of times. The beginning and the end, the first and the last, these represent... Jesus, our Savior. He is the beginning and the end. He is the first and the last. Jesus is the Word of God. Jesus is the one who has revealed the end from the beginning. From the book of Genesis, he has revealed the ending that we see in the book of Revelation. And that's why a study of the book of Genesis can be so fascinating is because it's it can be like reading the book of Revelation when you understand it. When you understand the parables of God, when you understand that the, the historical stories of God are actually fulfilled prophetically, fulfilled in the future. And we are living in the time now where we're, we are seeing the fulfillment of Scripture. And so in, in this book, the Eth Sefer, here in Deuteronomy 33, when holy ones occurs in the English Standard Version, it is actually translated Kodeshim in that Bible, the S. Sefer. And also Kodeshim here in the next verse. All his holy ones, all his Kodeshim were in his hand. He came from the ten thousands of Kodeshim. Notice there was flaming fire at his right hand and his holy ones are in his hand. The holy ones are the fire of God. The holy ones are the lake of fire. The holy ones, the Kodeshim, rule, will rule with a rod of iron. The Kodeshim do not yet rule, but when they do rule, they will rule with a rod of iron. And those who come under their jurisdiction are the ones who are thrown into the lake of fire because they are going to be subject to the fire of God that the Kodeshim determined.
we see the Kodashim in Revelation 19. In Revelation 17, we saw that the beast, the eighth beast, fights against the lamb. But we also see that God puts it in the heart of the beast to destroy Babylon the Great, which is the satanic spiritual government of the earth. That satanic government is now being destroyed. The problem is the beast doesn't really have a solution for it because the beast does not know how to form a righteous government. So God is using the beast to destroy the satanic and then God is going to install his government, his government of the Kodashim. And we see that, we see a, a little picture of it in the next chapter. So we see 17, where the eighth head of the beast is revealed. He begins to war against Babylon the Great. Chapter 18 of Revelation shows the utter destruction of Babylon the Great. And now in chapter 19, then I heard what seemed to be the voice of a great multitude, like the roar of many waters, and like the sound of mighty peals of thunder, crying out, Hallelujah! For the Lord our God, the Almighty, reigns. Let us rejoice and exult and give him the glory, for the marriage of the Lamb has come, and his bride has made herself ready. It was granted her to clothe herself with fine linen, bright and pure. For the fine linen is the righteous deeds of the Kodeshim. The word saints, the actual word should be Kodeshim, the righteous deeds of the holy ones. And the angel said to me, write this, blessed are those who are invited to the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he said to me, these are the true words of God. Then I fell down at his feet to worship him, but he said to me, you must not do that. I am a fellow servant with you and your brothers who hold to the testimony of Jesus. Worship God. Okay, that's the question that each of us need to answer. Do you, do I hold to the testimony of Jesus? Do you know what the testimony of Jesus is? To the law and to the testimony, Isaiah said, the testimony is the entire word of God. God did not annul and cast away his moral law when Jesus came. He did put an end to sacrifice because Jesus is the one sacrifice who fulfills them all. And so we no longer sacrifice bulls and goats. And Paul taught that we no longer have to dress a certain way, cut our beard a certain way, cut our hair a certain way, or even that we have to go to a certain uh, festival on a certain day or even, if, even celebrate the Sabbath on a certain day. I myself am free to take a Sabbath whenever I want. I, live, I attempt to live in the Sabbath all the time. What does that mean? The book of Hebrews chapter 4, there remains then a Sabbath rest for the people of God. What does that mean? For those who have entered God's rest, have you entered God's rest? He who has entered God's rest ceases from his own works. Okay, this goes back to the beginning of what I taught today about taking the Lord's name in vain. The people who take the, the Lord's name in vain have not rested from their own works. They're doing their own works. They're works of the flesh. That's how they take the name of the Lord in vain, by doing works of the flesh and saying it was the Lord's work. They haven't rested from their own works. They're still doing their own vain works. I wanted to do this video a couple weeks ago uh, on the Kodashim and I did not have the spirit with me to do it. I knew I couldn't do it. So I waited. And um, last night when I saw this news, suddenly 
I felt the Spirit prompting me that, okay, now it's time to come forward with this word. Now it makes sense. Because now we see it in context. The Kodeshim, the Holy Ones, do not respond to the actions of Donald Trump like those who are not Kodeshim. In other words, a lot of Christians are going to be confused, people who say they're Christians, people who are not holding to the testimony of Jesus. They're, mo most people who say they're Christians do not hold to the testimony of Jesus. So a lot of those people will be confused and they will begin to accept things like homosexual marriage. I mean, what else can they do? When you are appointing homosexuals to federal judgeships, how could that law that the Supreme Court made law in, uh, I think it was 2015, how could that ever be overturned? Because if you have practicing homosexuals on the bench, they would always uphold that as law. You have to have a righteous person on the bench to ever overturn that law. But we now have a president who is openly appointing homosexuals to the most important positions in our entire country. So, the Kodeshim hold of the testimony of Jesus. Worship God, said the angel, for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. See, when you hold to the testimony of Jesus, the Lord will open your ears and open your eyes and give you revelation of the prophetic word so that then you can bring forth the prophetic word you can speak in the spirit of prophecy. Then I saw heaven opened, and behold, a white horse. The one sitting on it is called Faithful and True, and in righteousness he judges and makes war. His eyes are like a flame of fire, and on his head are many diadems, and he has a name written that no one knows but himself. He is clothed in a robe dipped in blood, and the name by which he is called is the Word of God. Well, who is this? Well, of course, it's Jesus. It's Jesus, our Lord, our Savior, our King. And the armies of heaven, arrayed in fine linen, white and pure, were following him on white horses. Deuteronomy 33. The Lord came from Sinai and dawned from Seir upon us. He shone forth from Mount Paran. He came from the ten thousands of Kodeshim with flaming fire at his right hand. Yes, he loved his people. All his Kodeshim were in his hand. So here are the Kodeshim that Moses prophesies coming with Christ just after the beast destroys Babylon the Great. And the armies of heaven arrayed in fine linen, white and pure, were following him on white horses. From his mouth comes a sharp, sword with which to strike down the nations and he will rule them with a rod of iron from his mouth comes a sharp sword see the scripture prophetically of course there's no sword coming out of the mouth of jesus what comes out of his mouth words the word the word of god is the sharp sword the word of God is what strikes down the nations. Okay? The sharp sword with which to strike down the nations. The sharp sword, the word of God strikes down the nations and he rules them with a rod of iron. What's the rod of iron? It's his word. A word of iron. A word is not my word like fire and like a hammer that breaks the rock to pieces. God said to Jeremiah in chapter 23. 
This is the word. This has not come. This has not happened. When it happens, there will be power behind it to enforce it. It will not be an empty word. And the armies of heaven, arrayed in fine linen, white and pure, were following him on white horses. From his mouth comes a sharp sword with which to strike down the nations, and he will rule them with a rod of iron. He will tread the winepress of the fury of the wrath of God the Almighty. On his robe and on his thigh he has a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. The day of wrath is coming. The day of wrath is at hand, and the day of wrath... is going to be enforced by the Kodeshim. Then I saw an angel standing in the sun, and with a loud voice he called to all the birds that fly directly overhead, Come, gather for the great supper of God, to eat the flesh of kings, the flesh of captains, the flesh of mighty men, the flesh of horses and their riders, and the flesh of all men, both free and slave both small and great. And I saw the beast. This is the eighth head of the beast here. And the kings of the earth with their armies gathered to make war against him who was sitting on the horse and against his army. The beast fights against the lamb, but what kind of war? And the beast was captured and with it the false prophet who in its presence had done the signs by which he deceived those who had received the mark of the beast and those who worshipped its image. There is always a false prophet who will verify the things that the beast does and say that, oh, these are good things. These are the things of God, just like Balaam did. But Balaam taught the children of Israel to fornicate with the daughters of a foreign nation and therefore brought judgment upon Israel. And today the false prophet will teach God's people to accept homosexuality as okay now. It's okay now. No, it is not. It is not okay. It's not okay just like it's not okay for uh, me to commit adultery with a woman. I'm a married man. And that would be a sin, a sin worthy of death under the Old Testament law, just like the homosexual act would be a sin worthy unto death. And the beast was captured, and with it the false prophet, who in its presence had done the signs by which he deceived those who had received the mark of the beast and those who worshipped its image. So, We do not take the mark of the beast by following the ways of the beast. The ways of the beast are still the ways of the world. And we do not follow the way of the world. And we do not worship the beast. I respect Donald Trump. I support Donald Trump. I voted for him in 2016. I will vote for him this year. I encourage everyone in this country to vote for him. The other candidates are all part of Babylon the Great, and they would lead to such incredible bloodshed in this nation that we couldn't believe what would happen. Donald Trump fights against the Lamb because he does not obey the word of God. I do not see Donald Trump ever actively persecuting Christians or rounding them up or taking them to prison or things like that. These two, that is the beast and the false prophet, were thrown alive into the lake of fire that burns with sulfur. Oh my goodness, do you mean Donald Trump and whoever that false prophet or those false prophets are that lead people astray are going to be thrown into eternal torment 
in hell, in burning fire of hell. Hell is the place of the dead. That place, Hades, that place ultimately is destroyed by the lake of fire. The lake of fire is the word of God. Is not my word like fire. Jesus had eyes like a flame of fire. When Moses shows these Kodeshim coming, ten thousands of holy ones with flaming fire at his right hand. Isaiah says, I think it's Isaiah 23, can't remember for sure, but who can dwell with consuming fire? Only those who have determined to live in the purity of God's word. And it's not anything that they can do in their own power, but only by what Christ has done for them and in them. But we need to determine to live that way. The defining characteristic of the Kodeshim is that they know the testimony of God, they know the law of God, and when they sin, because they will sin in this flesh, when they sin, they repent of their sin. That's the key. We have to understand that we still live in a body of flesh that is tempted and sometimes even tempted to sin. But when we do sin, we have an advocate in heaven. We have a high priest, Jesus, who intercedes for us and always cleanses us from our sin. But not if we continue in our sin willfully and wantonly. Then he will leave us to our own devices. And ultimately, we will be thrown into the lake of fire, which means that we will be put under the jurisdiction of the Kodeshim and we'll have to live according to whatever they dictate. And I do not know what that's going to look like yet or how it's going to work out. I, I cannot tell you. So, verse 20, the beast... And the false prophet were thrown alive into the lake of fire that burns with sulfur, and the rest were slain by the sword that came from the mouth of him who was sitting on the horse. And all the birds were gorged with their flesh. Okay, the rest were slain. You know, I've seen pictures, artist pictures of this, that shows massive bloodshed and people destroyed by a sword that comes out of Jesus' mouth. That's not what is going to happen. The word of God comes out of Jesus' mouth. The word of God comes out of the mouth, the mouths of the Kodeshim. And the word of God is what slays the people. The word of God is what destroys the people. The word of God is what will destroy sin in your life and enable you to begin to live for God and not to fight against him. So the Kodeshim... They are the first fruits. They are the, they are the only ones that God prepared in this 2,000-year period of time from Christ until now, and really even before that because you only have a few Kodeshim that you see in the Old Testament because they knew that it was the Spirit of Christ in them prophesying future things. The Kodeshim are the ones who have been prepared throughout the years, the long years of this history of the world. They are the ones that God prepared to rule the earth in righteousness. They are the holy ones. So when you see the word saint in the Bible, 
Don't think back on the way you've always thought of that word, but think of a saint as being a holy one. The word does not apply to every Christian. The word does not apply to those whom the Catholic Church has called designated saints. A saint is a kodeshim. A saint is a holy one. The holy ones are the ones who are coming with Christ soon. And the holy ones are the ones who are going to establish the kingdom of God in the earth.